Hello everyone, it's DuckFerian07. Today I'm playing a new brew focused around Miran Spy and Emery Lurker of the Loch. I discovered this card like a week ago when I was accidentally, when I was trying to find some tech for my other deck and immediately realized its great potential with Emery, uh, Rona and uh, similar creatures, creatures with tap abilities, as, uh, with everything with Agatha Soul Cauldron. So, uh, I made this build mono blue and uh, I really really like the uh, the gameplay and what it does. The Miran Spy feels incredible with paired with these cards and it can go infinite in multiple, lay way in multiple ways. So uh, let us see what's happening in this deck. We have a uh, lot of these zero mana artifacts. They help us cast Emery on turn two, on turn one. Sorry. This means uh, if we have like a spring leaf drum plus ornithopter start, uh, we can uh, go turn two Miran Spy with Emery on the field and immediately just a combo off with uh, Misha Bubble drawing a bunch of cards on turn two. Uh, so drawing like 20 cards on turn two can sometimes guarantee combo kill on turn three. So that can be pretty strong. Okay, so uh, ways to go infinite with this, uh, build, uh, with this build and not just go infinite with Bubble drawing a bunch of cards is Grinding Station. This is already a very popular strategy in Modern and Emery, uh, it's good with Emery because uh, Emery uh, supports it well, can recast it from the graveyard. So having a combo piece that you can, uh, with your Emery, that you can also just cast uh, from your graveyard uh, with Emery uh, seems like a very good option and I'm very very satisfied uh, with this option. Other uh, other combo piece in this deck is Psy Master Top Terrest. Uh, it works well because it's a good draw um, in your starting hand and it works well with the rest of the deck because we have a lot of artifacts and helps you stabilize uh, post when you cast the one ring to help you jump the big threats from the opponent until you can do the combo stuff. Okay, so a Sai is there and uh, with uh, Miran Spy and Emery on the Lur Lurker of the Rock it creates infinite top uh, infinite with uh, Mi uh, Misha Bubble uh, a loop or uh, with Ornithopter loop uh, oh, sorry, Tarmod Crypt Loop or, or two Mox Embers, whatever. So it's another combo piece that uh, really blends in well with the rest of the deck. Okay, so what else we got here? So a uh, Spring Leaf Drum plus Ornithopter helps you sometimes uh, play your Urza Saga on turn one and immediately on turn two create a large construct, uh, start attacking uh, very, very early with uh, constructs that can be very, very large very soon. Aside from that, we also I put also put Rona Herald of Invasion in this deck. Rona also combos with Emery, uh, with and uh, compared with Agatha Soul Cauldron. So uh, if you uh, have Agatha on the field and Emery in the graveyard, you exile Emery, put counter on Rona, and then if you have a double Mox Ember, you can create infinite mana and then cast Walking Ballista uh, for infinite damage. This uh, seems like a lot of cards needed, but uh, it often it's very easy to pull off uh, if you have access to Walking Ballista, of course, and uh, it is another combo kill uh, you can do uh, uh, when drawing a bunch of bunch of cards with one ring, and uh, yeah, so uh, that uh, so this guarantees when you have the one ring on the field active, drawing a bunch of cards. This guarantees that in a couple of turns of drawing with the ring, you get uh, the option to go uh, infinite in some way because there are just a lot of uh, ways to do it. Okay, so uh, on this uh, on the sideboard. Uh, we have a uh, metallic rebuke and this card was very good. I was looking for ways to add a third one to the sideboard uh, But a lot of very useful cards there too. So this member as our only real removal, but uh, I found that removals are not that necessary in this deck and uh, it uh, it always threatens to do powerful stuff in the early turns and the opponent really has to find a solution uh, to it and uh, yeah okay so i think two dismembers are enough engineered explosives uh, this card is also can be played for zero mana and uh, in some ways it sometimes even can be used as a combo piece uh, with emery and the grinding station but 
um, you can also it's also very good against rhinos it's good against uh, it can be good against other decks that like hammer time scales stuff like that so it is a useful tool you can rebuy with your uh, emery each turn and sometimes lock those type of decks out okay so spellskite is a good target from uh, for grinding station uh, but also kind of debatable i'm uh, i was uh, uh, not feeling the need in a lot of matchups to bring this in. I just had a couple of those where I kind of wanted it. But it uh, provides very cool ability if you exile this with Agatha Soul Cauldron and can really effectively protect your uh, combo pieces. Okay, so it's not a bad card. So, uh, Torment Crypt is in the main because it costs zero mana and works well with Emery, playing Emery on turn one which is very powerful play and on the sideboard I have Stone of Eric and one Soul Guide Lantern. Pitting Needle, three uh, Hayward Might, which is the only reason why I play the green uh, in this mana base. And uh, second Gemstone Caverns, this card is very useful in this deck. So one in the main, one in the side and always switching a second minimum for it when it goes in. Okay, so that is it. Let's check the gameplay. I gotta say that um, in last two weeks, I think this is the strongest decks I can remember. This is the strongest deck I can remember myself playing. So this deck uh, is, I think, really, really good and has a lot of potential. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Turn one, I have Mox Ember and Ornithopter to play immediately Emery. And uh, if uh, if I mill. If I mill Misha Bubble, I can immediately go turn two, uh, turn two uh, infinite. I mean, inf not infinite because I don't want to mill myself back. I can draw a bunch of cards with Misha Bubble if I get the Miran Spy, so it can be a very powerful play. Uh, I didn't uh, mill anything good uh, except for Sprung Leaf Drum, so I just played that, and I was against my Living End opponent. So they decided to go turn 3 Violent Outburst with 2 Generous Sands uh, in their grave. Uh, yeah, uh, so taking mana here wasn't really necessary and my opponent now had 2 Generous Sands in and the Street Trade but I got uh, uh, Emery and the Psy Master Top Terrorist. Unfortunately my draws weren't great. Uh, I had just a land from uh, from the top, but I was able to recast the spring leaf drum uh, I um, From my graveyard which I uh, Targeted with my emery that died and I now I had option to uh, create a big construct So uh, nothing was over yet and I had a decent chance to uh, win this game so my opponent I jump one of the ends and yeah, uh, I get another land uh, for turn which was terrible but uh, I had Emery on the field and uh, the ring in the graveyard so I get the protection, I get another top tier and also get the Tormod Crypt and grow my construct uh, tokens to be really really large. Okay, so two things about this list very important. Uh, that I found that uh, I kind of like to have maybe uh, one shadow spear uh, in the 75 probably not in the main but in the sideboard this is primarily a combo deck that can, that can combo off very very easily so having a shadow spear is not usually that important for um, uh, because of the ring so you won't uh, kill yourself you can always sack it with grinding station or just play another ring a lot of possibilities but yeah I have a bunch of things I can do right now and uh, a grinding station is a kill at the moment but opponent has um, opponent has force of negation but uh, even with the force of negation, this doesn't mean anything. I, I have too much stuff here. And it's pretty good situation for me. Uh, I have Tormod Crypt, Agatha to play. 
uh, use uh, Emery a few more times, so that is all. Okay, opponent concedes, and let's go to the game two. I feel that this deck is really, really powerful once again. And yeah, okay, so let's see game two. I kept a good starting seven. I have Crypt, I have Moxember, and turn one Emery. I really like this play. Okay, so. I have, uh, I have Emery, I have Rona in my hand, uh, I have 2 mana to cast Rona next turn, and uh, mill over uh, 2 creatures with my Emery. And now I can uh, sack the Tormod script and rebite again with uh, Emery and do this every turn, which is pretty good. I go try to do this, opponent plays Waker of Face in response, trying to find Endurance probably. So I just exile their creature and recast my Tormod Crypt again, uh, cast Rona and pass the turn. So I have Agatha, I have Walking Ballista and this means basically uh, I have uh, I need, I have Emery in, on the graveyard so I have a combo kill uh, with uh, Rona. So I find another Mox Ember and that is uh, the last piece I needed for the combo kill. But uh, it will last a lot of time to do this combo kill uh, on the, uh, MTGO and it's not that really that hard, uh, that easy to do, so it is a lot of work. Yeah, so you have to play uh, this Mox Ember a bunch of times and it is fine. It is often fine to do this, you can do this like under 5 minutes, but uh, often uh, opponents don't concede and if you have to do this multiple times, it's not that easy. So walking ballista in the graveyard and I produce a bunch of, uh, I produce infinite mana this way with the two mox embers and Rona and create uh, and then uh, for last target choose the walking ballista and uh, do lethal to my opponent immediately. That is the match one. Uh, very cool uh, combo kills and uh, let's go well, let's skip the defeat we'll watch that in the end and let's go to another uh, match okay so uh, playing a second this time keeping okay hands uh, spring leaf drum and ornithopter but opponent has a spell pierce to slow me down a bit. I go turn to uh, uh, Rona and miss a bubble. Uh, so my opponent plays out the Archive Trap, which uh, yeah obviously tells me what is my opponent trying to do. Uh, they're trying to mill us and for my hand uh, that is pretty a uh, good uh, situation for the opponent i don't have any early pressure uh, just i'm completely depending on uh, turn for one ring which may not be the strongest uh, plays against my opponent's deck With the ring I get the protection from the Hedron Crab abilities for a turn but they can just fetch uh, on my turn and yeah opponent here goes for Tasha milling 18 cards so Tasha pretty good against me I didn't have any starting pressure uh, to, st to start uh, attacking my opponent and my opponent as I said can fetch on my turn so they do this and mill me before the draw step and that was the game okay so Let's see how I recovered in the next two games. Okay, so obviously uh, my game plan here was uh, uh, bringing in uh, two counter spells, two metallic rebukes, uh, rebukes I had on the side, trimming one mirror, I often trim one mirror spy and often just generally trim some cards. Uh, I, I kill on combo anyway, so I don't need a Haver Might really to deal with their um, ensnaring breaches or, or whatever. And yeah, so I just trimmed one Misha Bubble, one uh, Mirren Spy, 
Uh, one Ether Spell Bomb uh, and the uh, Tormod Crypt obviously not ne needed to bring in uh, some Dismembers, some Metallic Rebukes, stuff like that. Okay, so uh, my plan was uh, just going, uh, trying to, def uh, to win uh, with the large constructs early and yeah, I also got to do a uh, few Rona abilities here to smoothen my draws. I played the Ornithopter to make Construct even larger and my opponent was already struggling uh, with mana so this was basically a kill on the next turn and opponent concedes so let's check out the game 3 Okay so I started off with the Gemstone Caverns which means I get to play Rona on turn 2 and uh, but I also draw Emery and I prefer having Emery on turn 1 with bubble Mel Emery kind of mills myself so it's not great against mill but it's uh, really necessary because uh, the deck depends on it and uh, it's very good in the deck and you just kind of can't play without it Okay, so I think playing uh, Emery MS aggressively it's probably the best and just trying to win on combo as soon as possible. I get my uh, Rona on the field, I get the Mishra abilities and now I have Agatha Soul Cauldron. I have a bunch of stuff in my graveyard because my opponent milled me out. And yeah, so now... I have, uh, I have again the Rona uh, Emery combo because my opponent enabled it and I have also find a Metallic Rebuke to protect my combo and I had a spare mana to do this so I just paid 2 mana and put uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron on the field uh, Exile Emery with it and yeah so now again with uh, 2 Mox Embers I have infinite mana and uh, Walking Ballista in my graveyard, so uh, two matches in a row winning on uh, Rona Emery combo means uh, it was a good decision to put Rona in this deck as it's great synergy with uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron uh, and uh, and Emery too, and having access to this uh, great way to combo off is uh, makes deck really strong so uh, there is a lot of lot of different combos you can win on and that is partially the, uh, the deck's power and i feel like this this brew can be really really strong and uh, miran spy was incredible in those games um, making a deck a lot lot stronger uh, than i initially thought about this deck okay so Okay, so uh, starting with Urza Saga and Mox Ember uh, on turn 2, playing Emery, milling uh, another uh, Mox Ember. Opponent decides to uh, play the Beanstalk and kills my Emery immediately. And I have multiple options now, I could just go for Constructs, but I decide to go for Rona Agatha instead. Uh, I, I did this because if they don't deal with my uh, board I have immediate uh, kill on the next turn with the Miran Spy. So again I play uh, Ornithopter and Rona and this means if any of my creatures survive the turn I have the combo kill. So if they kill my Rona I just went for Exile Emery end of turn and even if they kill Rona I just exile it with Agatha and then exile uh, Emery and I have with Miran Spy I have, uh, I have infinite again so it's pretty brutal and uh, yeah it wasn't even necessary opponent didn't have a removal for Rona and I just go uh, infinite this way again with Miran Spy and uh, yeah so I can do a bunch of stuff here uh, I can do much bunch of stuff uh, like untapping uh, my Rona twice with uh, ca when casting Moxember. This means I can go mill through my uh, draw my entire deck and uh, find the 
the walking ballista and have infinite mana uh, and uh, just to do the kill so my opponent concedes so I have multiple ways to win this game and let's check out game 2 even if my opponent uh, killed Rona I would still be able to uh, uh, I will still be able to exile Emery uh, on any of my creatures and with Binance Pie in hand I will have infinite draws with Mishra Bubble. Okay, so again on turn 1 I play out the Emery, milling a lot of artifacts uh, in my graveyard. So let's see uh, the game plan in this matchup. Obviously I want my Haver Mites. Haver Mites kill their uh, Leyland Bindings, kill their Beans and I can just uh, easily replay it uh, from my uh, graveyard with using Emery or Agatha and I think yeah this uh, this strategy is very very good against them uh, because of how well can I exploit the Haver Might uh, it can be either like as I said uh, with Emery abilities uh, the Agatha and just drawing the Haver Might so a lot of ways to do this I also have a one ring uh, which can uh, take over the game uh, if they don't have a bunch of beanstalks in play and uh, yeah then if they don't uh, get rid of my ring on time a ring can easily just find me stuff i need to win this okay like uh, it's so easy to get uh, value here with all these uh, agatas and all these uh, powerful cards in this matchup so uh, my Haver Mites already did a great job and uh, I have uh, Emery and Ron on the field. They have to kill like both of these creatures because if they don't then this happens. And again I have uh, I have infinite with Rona so I go again for the Miran Spy and yeah this again goes uh, does the kill in many ways. So if I just play the uh, Mox Ember from my graveyard I get uh, two untap abilities, one from the Mox uh, Drona itself and the second from the Minan Spy. This means even if I don't have the Walking Ballista in my hand, I can just uh, go through my entire deck and find the Ballista and do the kill immediately. So uh, in this exact case I already had the Walking Ballista in my hand, but it uh, doesn't matter even if I didn't, I can like go through the entire deck and find it and do the kill immediately. The only problem is it takes a lot of time to do this and uh, you can, it's, if you have to do this two games in a row there is high chance that you might run out of time. But uh, as you can see so far I have been pretty successful uh, in winning games without getting close to time. I had plenty of uh, plenty of time in all of these matches and yeah so uh, that was it. Pretty quick wins against uh, Cascade Beans and let's check out the next win. Okay, so again I have a uh, turn 1 Emery and I also have uh, Urza Saga for turn 2 and the Misha Bubble to immediately replay it next turn with Emery. Okay, opponent also starts with Urza Saga. I go for uh, Rona turn 2 and uh, do uh, Misha Bubble ability. Now I also have the Agatha Soul Cauldron and I have access to turn 3 ring. My opponent was playing Amulet and the turn 3 ring was pretty cool in this situation. Uh, this means like I can't die on next turn and when I untap uh, on my next turn I have high chance of doing the combo kill because I already have a grinding station uh, in my hand. Uh, luckily I had access to the one ring because uh, my opponent uh, was also able to do crazy stuff on their turn and they uh, copied the amulet uh, getting two amulets and grazer plus azusa meant they can provide they can get a bunch of mana and uh, cast uh, the titan okay so yeah they did it they did it but also conceded did they fail with mana or what happened 
I think they didn't have two green, but even if they did cast the Titan, I would uh, still be in a good situation, because uh, uh, I would have uh, with Agatha Soul Cauldron in my hand and Emery uh, Rona on the field, they would have to get rid of both of these creatures to pro to not die next turn. So yeah, also one ring getting me a lot of draws uh, for a turn to survive or try to win in other ways and that was it uh, yeah win in game one let's check out game two okay so opponent again starts with urza saga and amulet i play turn one bubble mox uh, bub uh, ornithopter i pass the turn uh, now I'm passing the turn but also holding Metallic Rebuke uh, When my opponent just copies the amulet I can uh, crack those bubbles trying to get uh, other good draws uh, I get Emery so I was able to cast Emery and uh, and exile the Earth Saga with my Haver Might This means if they don't do much on their turn I get to uh, untap with Emery, uh, play uh, Haver Might and use it again I also uh, had another land to uh, to use a metallic rebuke unfortunately opponent finds the bojuka bog and removes uh, my graveyard along with haver mites yeah so now uh, uh, now I played my agatha soul cauldron maybe it was better to wait a turn to do this but yeah I had a metallic rebuke to counter dryad and I think I was still in a fine situation I decided to uh, I decided to flip my Rona in this situation and uh, start attacking I got counter on my ornithopter and just starting uh, with trying to aggro out my opponent, opponent now on 5 mana and single uh, green source uh, But I think, yeah, I made a mistake here uh, Flipping Rona was not a good call And I missed a lot of lot of Rona abilities this way And I missed the Mirren Spy interaction with it too So yeah, this wasn't a good decision to go for a Rona flip yeah, so I, I think uh, what I needed to do here is just go for uh, drawing, discarding, uh, finding uh, stuff I need and trying to combo kill as soon as possible. So I, yeah, I think if I, if I just done this and uh, went for it uh, with Miran Spy and just a couple of artifacts, you get to do a bunch of these uh, draw discards and yeah. I have a feeling I, I would be able to do something and uh, but this way uh, it was it was pretty easy for the opponent to stabilize and then uh, combo me so that was it okay uh, opponent had the kill in that game so let's check out the game three Okay, so have to uh, let's see the sideboarding plan again here. Okay, so we have a metallic rebuke, and as you can already see, I used metallic rebuke in almost uh, all of my matchups I played today. So it was very useful. I was very happy with it, and that's why I wanted to uh, add a third one to the side. Uh, but and also that shadow spear I was talking about was kind of uh, interesting in some matchups where I needed to race with my opponent and preserve a life total at the same time so definitely something to consider but also all good all, all cards are good on the sideboard the only card I had never used was uh, Spellskite I didn't use that card in any of my matchups today so maybe that is also something to consider uh, changing swapping uh, also I oh, sorry I also didn't use engineered explosives a single time 
Okay, so my opponent had endurance in this situation to get rid of my graveyard, but I also had another Agatha uh, in my hand, so this was okay for me. And uh, now my opponent was only on two cards uh, in their uh, hand. I started to do this more of these uh, Rona and Emery abilities, doing a card, finding another bubble, uh, doing more uh, abilities. And opponent goes for the attack but uh, forgets I can untap the Rona and block the Azusa, putting another counter on my creature. Yeah, so uh, continue, just continuing with Rona abilities, drawing cards, finding, uh, trying to find the infinite combo here. And my opponent is only on 4 mana at the moment and doesn't have too much going on. And now I find a Metallic Rebuke, which is a piece of interaction that is really good uh, at this moment. So I also I got the Grand Extension. So Grand Extension mean, uh, means I'm really really close to uh, comboing off. Okay, what I often did in uh, Bowmasters matchups, I would take out my Ronas. And uh, what I would do in other matchups, I would trim some cards often, like uh, one Miran Spy and uh, one Ornithopter, one Bubble. That that were like cards I would often uh, trim uh, when sideboarding. And Minam, I would always uh, swap Minamo for Gemstone Caverns because I have two Minamos in. Uh, that was my game plan. And yeah, Metallic Rebukes were very good. I was like really happy with them and have a lot of these zero mana artifacts so they play out very well okay end of turn i do uh, more of these own abilities and find the miran spy uh, and miran spy uh, gets me infinite with the grinding station and any zero mana artifact and yeah so uh, i play zero mana artifact and tap my emery with it grinding station mill three cards and repeat so that is the combo kill I can if you also if you have Psy Master Topterist, I can go for infinite topters. That is another option to go infinite, and uh, you can also just turn two go infinite with your Misha Bubble and draw like 20, 30 cards on your opponent's turn, so you don't have to discard, and then you untap with like 30 cards in your hand and try to win. Okay, so my opponent had. Uh, some respect in their hand and they were able to go for endurance but i didn't have much options and i was really uh, low on time so i had to decide what to do i decided to go uh, mill their deck and then also bounce the dryad this means they have to uh, uh, they have to use all their mana to uh, pay for Pact in the upkeep and then they also have to pitch cast the Endurance, probably ditching this Dryad, which was much better than them actually hard casting uh, Endurance. So I decided to go for a combo, uh, I uh, milled their entire deck and they, uh, it, uh, what I was talking about happened and yeah my opponent uh i in the meantime i got a bunch of mana too so i played one ring to protect myself from dying uh, next turn uh, i got uh put some power on the f on the field too so i can have a quick uh, way to kill my opponent with attacking and yeah so uh that was my game plan make them use all of their cards uh, at the moment so they don't have anything no amulets on the field no dryad and uh, yeah so uh and th this worked out so after this i just attacked them for uh for a couple of times uh, but i was as i said uh, when you doing this strategy this means i'm going to get really low on time as you can see i just had two and a half minutes here i succeeded to mill my opponent's deck and then i played the wandering from my graveyard and 
use the Tavara to, uh, to bounce the Dread. I had other ways to... Uh, <laughs> I had other things to do here, but... Uh, I was really low on time and I had to make a decision and I think this was like the best one uh, at the moment my opponent uh, pitch cast the endurance and they had to pay a lot of mana there and they had the bojuka uh, but in response i exiled uh, i exiled emery and i had uh, misha bubble on the field in case they have the bojuka so i have the infinite again if I want to but I don't have time to go infinite again so I just put some counters on my creatures and go for uh, damage my opponent is on six life at the moment and uh, they I have lethal on the next turn opponent uh, tries to go double Valakut my Rona but uh, forgets I have a Minamo again so I can put another counter on uh, Rona to save it and uh, yeah so on my turn i have lethal just with attacking and uh, that is it that is it against amulet i successfully won uh before my uh, i ran out of time okay so that were all the wins from this league and let's now watch the defeat okay so the defeat wasn't actually the defeat but i timed out uh, when I was trying to combo off in the last match, so let's let us just count this one as a win and uh, Check out the games. Okay, so this was basically a trophy uh, trophy um, uh, league But unfortunately I timed out in this last match and Yeah, okay, so I Knew my opponent has the bow masters there when they are attacked with Ragavan, but I'm fine taking this trade Okay, so I had Urza Saga on the field and three Miran Spies in my hand. Miran Spy is not that useful in a situation like this where I don't have Emery or Rona, but it's very, very uh, useful otherwise. And yeah, okay, so opponent had not dead after all there to kill my construct. And I, f uh, I draw the one ring for a turn, so I decide not to make another construct, but just cast the one ring. And opponent has the bow masters right now, but uh, yeah, I decided to go for the ring anyway, and just to, like kind of uh, hope to find uh, the combo pieces here. I already have the Miran Spy in my hand. And uh, yes, I had a bunch of these creatures and what I did basically is use those creatures to prevent opponent from pinging me face. Okay, so I just played uh, uh, Erza Saga, played some attackers and also uh, Ether Spell Bomb and pass the turn. So uh, my pl I had Ether Spell Bomb which is in the main my only removal for uh, the orc token so again i had i had different options in this game i uh, in this one i decided to go for agatha and just make a construct again and not do the one ring ability just yet Okay, so opponent goes for the attacks here and then I make a construct token and go for the blocks. I'm not sure if my opponent uh, is thinking about uh, me uh, getting the Agatha trigger and when they did this before the second Bowmasters enters the field I decided to sacrifice my construct token and everything and just draw three cards uh, before the second bowmaster hits the field uh, this way I lost uh, one of my Mi Miran spies and uh, ended up jumping the token but I was uh, I was going to uh, spell bomb uh, that one uh, anyway so I was fine with this 
At this point I was looking at uh, for my uh, hoping to get my walking ballista. Walking ballista is easy way for me to kill the boat bow masters and uh, try to go uh, try to combo off. Opponent goes uh, for attacks just with orc army and I use I use uh, the spell bomb to get rid of it. Okay, now opponent has the one ring to kill my topter. And uh, yeah, they have a bunch of creatures on the field, but it means nothing if I can get uh, something good from the top. And Emery is definitely something good. I, I thought too much about my place in this game and it took me uh, too much time. I'm already 15 minutes and this is game one. It was really long game and uh, I had to make some uh, not so easy decisions. And but right now, Emery on the field, uh, Agatha on the field, uh, and the Miran Spy. Two Miran Spies actually means I have uh, ways to win this. Okay, so I actually uh, went for. Uh, I had options. I had options to go for multiple Emery abilities, so I played the Ether Spell Bomb, targeted Misha Bubble, targeted Mox Ember from my graveyard, and now I get two more Amiran Spy abilities, which means I can target my entire uh, graveyard with Emery, uh, play a bunch of cards. So uh, my play here was actually bounce my own uh, Emery and try to mill a walking ballista. That was my game plan and I successfully done this. I played the Emery and milled the walking ballista and then take the walking ballista with Agatha Soul Cauldron. Once I did this, I had, uh, I had multiple counters on my creatures and I was able to uh, get rid of these bowmasters. Okay, so I try to ping, uh, opponent plays not dead after all, I use another ping, I, I go to try to kill second bowmaster first, uh, they use another not dead after all, but I have Minamo to untap my Agatha Soul Cauldron, this way I can exile one of the bowmasters from the graveyard, and then when I kill the second one, I use a Tormod script to get rid of uh, their second not dead after all, and now... Uh, I also uh, have multiple ways to uh, deal with my opponent's board. I have uh, Miran Spy doing more work here. Drawing me cards because uh, I have Rona exiled. I also have Walking Ballista exiled. So a lot of options at the moment. And But you can see this is a game one and I'm already on uh, 8 minutes on my clock and this was the reason why I lost this game my opponent okay so okay so this is basically the, the Miran Spy and Emery together is basically same uh, does the same thing as uh, with uh, zero mana artifact like Similar thing to what what you do when you have a, a Rona on the field. I'm already low on time and it's game one, so I decide just to uh, go for uh, uh, attacking and kill my opponent with uh, construct tokens and other creatures. They're on zero cards at the moment. I have too much stuff going on, so I just go for attacks with everything, puts them on five, cast. Yeah, this was maybe unnecessary. I, was, I needed just to cast the one ring here, yeah, it was a necessary waste of time, I'm not sure why I did this, maybe I wasn't aware of the clock at the moment, I should have just cast the one ring and passed the turn at this point, I lost a couple of minutes there for nothing, okay, so yeah, I think I wasn't aware of the clock at this point, so maybe this was uh, this was a reason why I didn't uh, get the trophy with this build. I unnecessarily wasted like two minutes there.
Uh, I had a bunch of jumpers here, so Fury is no problem. Opponent is on just one card in hand, and I have multiple ways to go for the kill. And I finally get the kill, but I'm already under five minutes. So this was a reason why I yeah that was lethal. So I immediately considered the game two and started the game three uh, just because of the clock. I considered the game two and started the game three because I wanted to play first to have better chance of starting aggressively and winning as soon as possible. So I go uh, for turn one Soul Guide Lantern to make myself a kind of. Uh, safe from a scam but if i went for a Splingrave drum i would be able to cast the sai on turn two immediately and then get these topters going and start pressuring my opponent earlier so maybe that would be better yeah opponent uh, it would be more aggressive definitely and i would already be in a situation when i would uh, attack Okay, so right now I had uh, okay situation here. I just needed uh, like Emery, uh, Rona uh, doing more uh, stuff here. And I got the Rona from the top. Unfortunately, my opponent has the Bowmaster. Bowmaster is great against Rona, but I can also uh, just flip the Rona and start attacking with it. So at the moment, that was my game plan. Another Rona from the top, unfortunately no Emery for me. If I had a single Emery in this situation, Emery is really really powerful. And opponent also had the Sheldred, which is ultimate hit for uh, my Rona, uh, paired with a Bowmaster, so that wasn't an option. And I had to switch to attacking with Rona and uh, top third tokens. Unfortunately also no Saga for me. And I had to skip that uh, uh, game too. So definitely big handicap. Uh, still, I would be able to win this one if I had enough time. I went for grinding station, making another top third, uh, doing another attack with uh, Rona. Okay, finally got the Emery. That was card I was looking for. And yeah, now situation looking much better. I have uh, Emery, Rona on the field. I have two Mox Embers and I have Walking Ballista uh, in the yard. And uh, Agatha Soul Caldron means infinite in this situation. But as you can see, obviously I don't have enough time to go for another infinite. Yeah, so I was hoping to, uh, I was hoping to be able to get through with damage, but my opponent had a lot of lot of stuff there, and I find the Miran Spy from the top, and yeah, so Miran Spy in this situation goes definitely uh, infinite. With the two Mox Embers, I have uh, infinite mana, and I have. Uh, Walking Ballista in my graveyard, so that is uh, that is actually a kill right now. That is a kill. I also have the grinding station for another way to kill my opponent, but unfortunately not enough time, and I can't I can't start doing this. If I start doing this, then it is over. But I have a kill with grinding station. I can mill my opponent entire deck. I can create infinite mana with two Mox Embers and uh, uh, play a really large Walking Ballista. I was looking for ways to get rid of uh, the Sheldred. My opponent finally kills, uh, kills Rona. I play my ring. Yeah, but it was over at this point because I didn't have enough time to combo off, uh, though I had multiple ways to combo. Maybe I should have tried to go for the grinding station combo. I had a minute. I probably wouldn't be able to do it in a minute. Yeah, I think it's impossible. I need at least like three minutes to do that. So that was the game, but this should have been my win. 
and uh, if I if I play if I, I I wasn't aware of the clock in game one if I played that better and played faster I would win this one and get the trophy and also the same exact thing happened to me in the next league again I went 4-1 with only loss in my league was when I timed out in a similar fashion and yes yeah, so that is uh, that is what deck this deck has to fight against when playing online you are uh, uh, often playing against the clock and you need to know this deck well and play fast and if you don't do this uh, the great example is this last game where I played too slowly in game one despite uh, already knowing a uh, lot of uh, possibilities ahead in my deck I still not uh, expert on this uh, a brew I made because I re you really I really need a lot of practice to be really good at it so I often need uh, uh, some time but although my all my decisions were very good uh, through this entire league and the last match uh, unfortunately in this last one I was just too slow to win on time and that's it but my overall impression about this card is that it has been slapped from uh, when Mirrodin besieged uh, released and this guy never saw any play anywhere and uh, it is a basically 3 mana paradox engine which does wonders with Emery and Rona so I'm not sure if this league was enough for you to see uh, how good this card is in this deck uh, with Emery and Rona but in multiple times uh, from the top of my deck uh, it enabled me uh, easy win and this was also uh, he was also much much better in even in other leagues where it was just directly led to winning the game when I top decked the Miran Spy in multiple situations. So I think basically this guy does the same thing as Underworld Breach does, but is also a creature and can be hated uh, with, uh, with I'm not sure, some uh, uh, other stuff that you can uh, put in other, but yeah, this is a creature, you can kill it, but it is also a good thing for being a creature because you can uh, this is a creature this is a deck that really depends on creatures and you can use uh, to put agatha counters on it it's a one three flyer so it can jump uh, it can uh, block uh, ragavan well stuff like that can be relevant and uh, yeah that's it so uh, miran spy uh, a lot of people uh, asking me do I uh, why I don't play breach here but uh, Mira Spy does the same thing and staying in a one single coral enable me to play uh, the simpler mana base with two minamos and minamos like are excellent in this deck this this land is super super good here and does really wonders untapping uh, uh, Emery untapping Agatha untapping Rona untapping Ring all this stuff has been very very relevant and I really like it and as I said what I wanted to do here is add a third rebuke and add a shadow spear to the side options I would consider for taking out would maybe be explosives and spell skite maybe one graveyard hate piece uh, yeah but uh, uh, the rest of the cards like were really good and uh, that's it so hope you enjoyed this video i think this deck is amazingly strong i think this has huge huge potential to be really uh, really huge power in modern i have felt incredible playing this deck like the, it's impossible to lose with it and the amount of times you get to play emery on turn one because of 12 zero mana artifacts is just amazing and also springly drum can help you do this too so it's actually 15 cards that enable you to do this um, mana base is really simple gemstone caverns have been great with rona uh, with uh, uh, emery enable you to play emery even uh, more often on turn one and that's it i, I didn't miss uh, having uh, removal at all it was like totally unnecessary but sometimes when fighting with creatures i wish i had like shadow spear uh, in the side uh, but dismembers were useful in the matchups I needed them 
and the one ether spell bomb did wonders in a lot of situations there too as did the one of ballista maybe uh, maybe second ballista is answer to needing more uh, removals because basically what you need is a removal for uh, orcish bow masters you don't really need a removal for other creatures you can successfully jump creatures for turns and turns without any problems so i don't think uh, that is uh, an issue with this build but maybe second ballista could be a good thing uh, yeah so that is it uh, i really really have high hopes for this deck uh, and i hope the people will recognize the build and put effort to try to play it uh, online it's incredibly fun to play although sometimes uh, you have to beat the clock but uh, still uh, you, it's very manageable and i don't think uh, it's that often you will uh, uh, lose the clock but it happened to me two leagues in a row in the uh, in the my only loss was timing out and uh, it's otherwise it would be 10-0 with the freshly made brew that's never see so any play in modern so it's kind of amazing and satisfying to do this just uh, brew the deck and go undefeated in multiple uh, matches with it in this cruel meta game with beans with scam nothing uh, stopped me i beat uh, scam and beans multiple times beans were having problems uh, dealing with uh, all this combo stuff going on early so uh, in many situations they will just keep hands where they have cascade spells or the fairy and that is not enough to be this you have to have solitude at all times uh, uh, preventing me from going uh, uh, combo comboing off and uh, yeah so that is it also the one ring as a plan b has been very very effective here and uh, another way to uh, beat those uh, uh, scam and uh, ring piles and uh, bean piles sorry so that is it hope you liked the list hope you liked uh, the video uh, friendly reminder to click like click subscribe i really 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 want to hear about your uh, impressions and um, thoughts about this deck uh, did you try it on mtgo did you play it in paper how did it go and uh, that's it okay thank you for watching and goodbye